and, and one of the things I really picked up was, you know, the fact that you went from working those minimum wage roles or, you know, being a, working in a, a store or restaurant and getting from there to, to working in cybersecurity. Basically working kind of minimum wage jobs in like takeaways and restaurants and chip shops. And then I came across an ad hiring a hacker for over 70 grand. I didn't really know how to learn and pass difficult topics, even that kind of higher mm. level of thinking, research more about IT support, help desk, you know, fundamentals, and kind of going back to the beginning of, you know, you're not going to get a hacking job straight away. Let's take baby steps. You know, got into cybersecurity because of me or past exams because of the knowledge or resources that I've shared, you know, things that I've, you know, helped to do so i think you know those kind of things keep you motivated hello and welcome to the tech certified podcast i'm your host caleb only certified and once again this is the podcast where we interview tech creators and tech professionals who inspire us on our journeys in the tech industry the aim of this podcast is to bring the knowledge of tech professionals and tech creators closer to those who need it. And we'll be doing exactly that with today's guest. Today's guest is Salah. Salah is a cybersecurity consultant with a number of years experience in the cybersecurity field. He is also a content creator who goes by the name Cyber Salah on YouTube. Salah, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on. How are you doing today? Are you okay? Yeah, doing amazing. Uh, so great to have you. Um, so, so, so first things first. Let's just have an introduction to to Sala and and just tell the audience a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, again, thanks for having me on. Really, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so a little bit about myself, I uh, started off my career kind of um, basically working kind of minimum wage jobs in like takeaways and restaurants and chip shops and then I came across an ad hiring a hacker for over 70 grand and I remember at the time thinking, wow, this is actually a job, like you can get paid to be a hacker, like I had no idea that was a thing, like I didn't really like IT in school, I had no idea cybersecurity even existed at that stage. Um, and yeah, from that kind of moment, that was a pivotal point that just made me kind of immerse myself within cybersecurity. And I started doing so much research and learning and downloading Caddy Linux and messing around and like hack the box and try hack me. And then after that, what I did was I realized I needed to get a support role first, just to get a little bit of IT and tech experience before pivoting over into cybersecurity. So yeah, I did that. Um, it was very difficult and a very long journey, but eventually I got into a support role. And then um, after that, I pivoted my way into a compliance role, a GRC role, kind of like an audit role. And since then I've, essentially worked my way up you know took a bunch of exams and you know moved around a little bit a few different jobs a few different opportunities and yeah and kind of at the beginning of that i also wanted to document my journey so i started to create content um wasn't very serious i wasn't very good at it i'm still not very good at it i still got ways to improve but um yeah, I started creating content and that kind of helped me document my journey at the beginning. But now the, I guess, purpose of that has shifted slightly. And yeah, that's just a little bit about myself. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a really great introduction. And, and one of the things I really picked up was, you know, the fact that you went from working those minimum wage roles or, you know, being a, working in a, a store or restaurant and getting from there to, to working in cybersecurity. Um, so, so I want to really know a lot more about that. And I know like for the audience, they'd be really interested to understand a lot more about that sort of journey and, and transition to cybersecurity. So could you like give uh, a brief walkthrough of that journey from, you know, going from those roles in, at the store or those minimum wage roles to, to working in cybersecurity now? Yeah, sure. Um, it was... 
it was hard. I'm not going to pretend like mm. it was easy. You know, it's it took me um, kind of total immersion. I think that's the first and most fundamental part was that I literally deleted all my social media. I got rid of everything and I created new social media. And all I did was follow cybersecurity content, um, some courses, you know, got rid of Netflix and Amazon and all the kind of distractions that I had around me at the time. Um, and completely immersed myself in that world. And then when I started, I obviously had no idea what certifications were, which ones were good, what to take. And I spent a lot, well, I wasted a lot of time um, and money on courses, on like boot camps, on random resources that weren't really worth it anything in terms of like um, the market value um, and weren't really teaching me the right skills. But eventually, I landed on um, TCM Security, the Practical Ethical Hacking course. And that was essentially the first real cybersecurity course that actually taught me something. And um, after doing that, I started to get better at understanding what types of cybersecurity content was good and what was bad, because there's a lot of bad stuff out there. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, I didn't buy this, but there was one lady i won't mention any names or anything but she was selling a cyber security course which was affirmations of how to get into cyber security so she was essentially packaging up her prayers and putting them in a pdf and selling them to people and that's the kind of content that you're seeing so i mean back then you you know it was only three to five years ago um in that time period there weren't a lot of popular content creators so i had found and there's certainly a lot more nowadays but there was a lot of rubbish so it, it took a lot of time to filter a lot of that out and getting the support role um and getting into it was kind of that decision of i need to shift my focus because i'm not going to get into cyber security straight away um so i then started to train myself and gain support skills and research more about it support help desk, you know, fundamentals and kind of going back to the beginning of, you know, you're not going to get a hacking job straight away. Let's take baby steps. Um, and then I, once I joined the company, um, there was a lot of knocking on the door of the security team, asking them for mentorship, offering help where I could, networking, um, not just within that team, but across the company, just to kind of, I guess, um, raise my notability and be known as someone who can just deliver and help. So yeah, it was a combination of um, really digesting content, you know, filtering out all the noise and all the distractions and networking within the company once I landed in a support role. And luckily, you know, I think it's a mixture of hard work, luck, prayer, and yeah, I kind of got my first role and from then, I will be honest, it was just very easy to kind of, um, once you've gained some skills, you know, cybersecurity is an in-demand role. So once you have once you can add value, a lot of companies want that value and will pay you for it. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. That's an incredible story, for uh, like, really. And, and that's why I was so excited to have you on. I think it's really interesting, the pathway, the path that you took to, to getting into this space. And I recently made a video just speaking about, you know, pathways to cybersecurity. And there's so many different ways. Well, not so many, but there are different ways that people end up in this industry. You know, some people, you know, just go for university. Uh, other people, you know, they do do a boot camp. Other people are so, sort of more self-taught and do courses that they find and that sort of thing, which sounds a lot like well, what you've done. And, and also some people are just working their way up. And it sounds like for your journey, you have a mix of, you know, doing that self learning, being sort of self taught and also working your way up through, you know, like, like you said, that, that, that tech support role and, and using your networking and knocking on the doors of, you know, the cybersecurity sort of departments to, to sort of get into that role, which is, which is really yeah, I think it's you're completely right. It's it's definitely a mixture, and, and I appreciate your comments. And yeah, there's a hundred different paths. I mean, maybe not exactly a hundred, but there are so many different ways to get into cybersecurity. And I think when you see people put stuff out, and 
this is the kind of thing I fall for. You you fall for this trap of it has to be like A plus and network plus and security plus and C right. plus and that that's the only path. And like you know, I guess you know, I'm here as an example, and many other people are that to say that you know there are so many different routes to get into cybersecurity. Some are easier. Um, some are a lot more difficult. But yeah, um, it's no one way to climb this mountain, I guess. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And let's talk a little bit about some of the technology that you've learned and used on your journey. Um, so, so, you know, through your journey, you know, working in the space so far in the number of years that you, you've worked in cybersecurity or even leading up to it through your other roles, um, what are the main bits of technology that you've sort of learned and, and worked with in your career? Yeah, um, so at my early stage of career and this was mainly self-taught and self-study and i will say you know i've only got coming up to three years of experience in cyber security and a little yeah. bit longer in support and studying and doing stuff um you know by myself so in terms of technology it started off with a lot of like Cali linux offensive security you know the nmap the burp suite the nessus the nicta all these kind of tools that you use for um well, those are kind of mainly reconnaissance type of tools and information gathering. But yeah, I mean, that was the main thing. It was that kind of typical Kali Linux type of tooling. But as a, as I actually got into cybersecurity, um, I started off an audit and assurance. So I started off working with, I guess, frameworks for cybersecurity. And that really opened my eyes because in my head, I always thought cybersecurity was just hackers and blue teamers you know you get this idea of red team and blue team and realistically there should be you know you hear about purple team but there's also kind of a green team a green team sorry the compliance team you know the people who are working within the frameworks like iso 27001 you know SOC 2 um, even laws have an impact like the NIST regulations and you know door is a new one and so I would say at the moment, I'm more of a kind of specialist in the GRC space. So it's not so much technologies, it's more cybersecurity frameworks that I have to learn, understand and digest, and then be able to um, implement them, audit them, and get an organization compliant with them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely answered it well. And, and, it, and it's interesting to hear a lot more about, you know, those GRC roles and, and um things around you know audit and compliance because those are big parts of you know cyber security and, and roles that uh, a lot of people work in um so yeah that's that's a that's a great sort of understanding of of, of what that role sort of looks like um for, for loads of people who are looking to get into those sort of um roles and industries to describe it as a paperwork side of cyber security and um it's a bit of an oversimplification, but it kind of really is. You know, there's a lot of paperwork, some box ticking, some useful things, um, but it has to be done and somebody has to do it. And that's kind of what GRC roles are for. It's understand, understanding the legal, the compliance, the regulations, the things you have to do behind it. It's not, you can't just say to a customer, we are secure by our product. You have to be able to prove it. It's a little bit like when you go to a restaurant and they have that five star um, thing to say that they've met the like food and hygiene standards, and then you know that they're probably a clean restaurant. It's similar in cybersecurity. Companies, organisations need to have some sort of certificate or badge or report to prove that they are secure. So yeah, nice, nice, and that's a that's a great explanation. I wanted to talk about, you know, some of your certifications because, you know, you, you're, you're um, CISP certified and you also have your CCSP. Is, 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 that, is that right? Which is, it, yes. Kind of, I would caveat that with, um, I'm not technically certified, but I've passed mm. the exams. Right. So to become fully certified, you need to have five years of experience. Um, oh, so. Man. CISA, CISSP, CCSP, um, I technically don't have, I'm not certified. I'm a holder or an associate of the exam, like I've passed the exam, um, and I will be certified as soon as I hit five years of experience. But, 
yeah, technically not certified, but that's a legal thing you have to say because if you say you're certified and you're not, they'll take it off you and it's not a work guard down the drain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But you've you've managed to pass those exams and study for those exams and acquire, you know, the knowledge to to be able to pass those exams. And and I wanted to ask you about that and understand, you know, how sort of the knowledge of learning from for, for, for those exams has helped you in your career or, you know, how you expect it to, to sort of help, you know, moving forward as well. Yeah. Um so it's a very good question. And I would say that the I guess how I studied or how I kind of passed the exams is a very weird thing I had to do because, you know, I've never been to university. I barely went to college. So I was just a bad learner, a bad student. Mm. I didn't really know how to learn and pass difficult topics, even that kind of higher Mm. level of thinking. If you did a degree in something completely unrelated, like math or physics or, you know, whatever it may be, you have been able to kind of think at a very deep technical level in that specific area so then when you come to pick up something else that's deep and technical it becomes a little bit easier so I have to kind of go back to the beginning of you know what are some learning techniques um how do I not get distracted um how do I stop pulling out my phone and you know just mindlessly scrolling or getting or playing a game or whatever it might have been so it's kind of like really really difficult because I had to learn how to learn before I even started the exams. And I think that's the most valuable thing that I got out of those certifications is that, um, especially for the CISSP, because it's like a level seven equivalent to a master's degree, just to give you an idea of how difficult it is. It's not an easy exam to pass. So it took me a long while to really kind of develop the focus and the discipline to actually sit down and just read through them. Read, sorry, read the content, understand it, digest it, do some practical stuff and then eventually pass the exam. And in terms of how it's added, I guess, value to my role, um, I think from day one, you know, it's all about the process. Um, I've always tried to do practical things. So I'll give you an example. When I was studying about key management systems in cloud, um, you know, I learn the concepts and you know you can use or manage your own keys or sometimes they're managed by the vendor and all that kind of stuff but I didn't really you know you could read that and just try and memorize it conceptually KMS key management system it's done by the the user or the um or the vendor themselves but I decided to ask a DevOps team at my organization you know can you show me how you manage keys can you actually can we go through this can we check what you do um and you know that you know half an hour hour on a call with them and trying to understand the process and how they generate the keys and all of that stuff taught me so i think everything i do i try and get at least some practical i guess research or try and do it myself you know so that's one side is kind of i guess cementing the knowledge is important to back it up with some practical experience because CISSP, CSAP, CCSP, they're all just text and questions you can pass if you've got really good memory, um, but ultimately you'll forget the stuff if you don't have some sort of practical use to it. And I'd say um, it's made me a better consultant, made me a better security professional because, uh, yeah, just going through the process, even before I passed, it was just like you're learning so much, you can have wider conversations you've uh, got more of an overarching understanding of the whole security mission and goals and even when somebody mentioned something like a golden ticket attack you know before i did my cissp um, i probably would have no idea what's a golden ticket attack and i'd be that guy in the meeting googling which i have been for a lot of my career trying to figure out what's going on what does that mean but you know it gives you that on at least a bit of knowledge about quite a lot of things so you can keep up with what's going on and uh what people are talking about yeah amazing thanks so much for that Salah. that's some some great uh great points that you made there um and just to jump into the next question i wanted to ask you about 
your advice on getting into cybersecurity um, because there are loads and loads of people who are on that path, um, who are aspiring to be a cybersecurity professional or perhaps who are working in other fields and want to jump into cybersecurity. Um, and this sort of channel is, is one of the main things that we kind of focus on, you know, cyber and cloud and, and loads of people are interested in cybersecurity. So I wanted to ask you whilst we have you here for your advice to, to the audience on getting into cybersecurity. Um, so, so what would your advice to doing that be? Yeah. Um, it's a mixture of things, to be honest. I think it depends on the individual and, um, there's an element of people should, I guess, analyze where they are. You know, if you've gone mm. to uni to do computer science or cybersecurity, or you've got a lot of IT experience and then you're trying to move into cybersecurity, that's going to be a very different journey or advice, um, as opposed to someone who's got no experience, no degree, no certifications, and they want to get into cybersecurity. So I definitely think there's an element of um, getting some IT or tech experience, um, not necessarily in a company. There's a lot of training you can do online, a lot of labs, but you have to gain that baseline knowledge of how do computers work? How do companies work? How do they use technology? You know, that level of understanding has to be there. And if you haven't gained that through a degree or experience, then I think that's where you should start. Um, and then, you know, understanding, I guess, the different areas of cybersecurity and what interests you, whatever you pick isn't necessarily a life sentence, you know, um, just because you might have started off studying hacking like I did doesn't mean you're going to do that for the rest of your life or you're going to start off studying GRC or whatever it may be. There's always time to pivot and try different things out and it only makes you a better rounded professional. But definitely pick a kind of niche to focus on, at least to start with. Don't try and master all of cybersecurity. It's too big. There's too many areas. Try and specialize or at least learn one thing. And once you've kind of got the cybersecurity specific learning, you know, depending on your budget, there's a lot of free stuff. There's a lot of cheaper stuff and there's some very good expensive stuff. Um, I'd say don't pay anything expensive unless you know that it's a really good course and you've done your research and a lot of people have, uh, yeah, essentially stood behind that. And I don't mean like some popular boot camp. I mean like the SAN certifications or, or CISSP type of training or um, maybe like OSCP guided learning courses or, you know, co uh, yeah, training, something along those lines. Um, or like the Try Hack Me courses, I know they're quite expensive. Sorry, the not the Try Hack Me, if you can just cut that bit out, please. The Hack the Box courses, you pay like an annual membership um, and you get access to quite a lot. So those are some very yeah. good, well-established type of courses and things you can do. And again, that's a one niche of cybersecurity. So yeah, essentially, um, focus on understanding the baseline IT technology, how do things work, gain some cybersecurity skills, and then look at some paid skills if you're not already in it. But alongside all of that, you know, and fundamentally, this is a backbone of everything. I would say it's networking and showing your work. And when I say showing your work, of course, you can make YouTube videos, you can create content, you can start a blog, you can post about it on LinkedIn, but I have seen some very successful people as well who have private random blogs that you will never know about and that are some of the best technical content that I've ever seen in my life. And what they do is they'll apply to a job and they'll send the link to that, or give that specific person access to it. And that's what they use. You know, they've got a portfolio, a sizable amount of projects and experience that they can demonstrate and that is the best thing to do like i can't even explain how many times i've seen it work i've got one mentee um who you know has become a very close friend of mine in tanzania um east africa literally coming from a village very little access to the internet but he was a technical genius and he literally just 
you know, came to me and was like, what shall I do? I've done all this stuff. And when I'd, we'd had a few conversations and I realized there was nothing I could even add to his cybersecurity knowledge. He was probably way smarter than me in cybersecurity, but he was just lacking the portfolio, the kind of how to write a CV, how to show yourself, how to network. And th that's kind of what I advised him to do. Primarily start a blog, improve your CV, let's get some projects out there. And now he's got some huge offers and he's earning, you know, the annual the annual kind of average in like two weeks in this country. It's crazy. It's crazy how much he's making relative to, you know, what the, I guess, cost of living is there. Um, and yeah, that's just one example of if someone in the middle of essentially nowhere quite you know poor opportunities around them and they can change their you know and that's just one example but there's so many people who've created a platform created projects shown their work and just changed their lives so yeah focus on the knowledge technology network build everything in the background make sure that you've got something you can show your employer um i'm sure there's a lot of other things, but um, I understand I've waffled on for a bit, so I guess I'll pause there and um, kind of, yeah, spin that back to you, I guess. I mean, what do you think? Do you think um, what do you think is like the best advice for cybersecurity newcomers? Yeah, I think everything that you said is just really good. Um, it's great stuff. And, and one thing that stood out from what you said is, of course, networking but also having a platform to put your work out there. Um, I feel like, you know, that's something that I've done with this, this YouTube channel, not, not even necessarily what I I'm working on, but even just documenting my, my journey through the work that I've done. And I, I can see that the, the way you've done that as well with YouTube, um, which has been really great. And I see loads of other people just doing that. Um, and I know, it, there, there, there are loads of other ways to do that outside of YouTube. Like people, people have blogs on their their personal blogs, or they write articles on Medium, or you know, uh, there's just so many ways of doing it. Um, and it's yeah. it's just a great way to show what you've actually done, rather than just talking about it. Right? It's not just the you know I've done this, I've done this, but you, you do a project and you're able to display that somewhere for, for others to see. And, and I feel like what that really does is it, it's a part of your sort of personal branding towards companies and, and you're able to show companies something um, so that they can sort of come towards you rather than you going towards them, if that makes sense. So yeah, that, that's some, some, some great, great advice. And um, yeah, really, really appreciate that. And I know, the audience will be able to take a lot from. We've just launched a free cloud engineer assessment to evaluate and assess your current skills on your path to becoming a cloud professional. Now, when you take this assessment, it provides some incredible recommendations for your path. And remember, this is completely free. It costs you nothing. It only helps you on your journey. So if this interests you and you are an aspiring cloud professional, definitely take this assessment. I'm gonna leave a link to it. Here's an example of me taking it myself and getting some pretty good recommendations from my own assessment. So guys, check this out. And I hope this is really helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Wait, yeah, thank God. Cool. And um, let's dive into the next question, which once again, I ask everyone on the channel um, who, who comes onto the podcast. And I just want to ask you for one interesting career story, whether it's a, a great career story that was amazing or whether it wasn't so great and something went wrong or it was bad or whatever. Um, so, so what is an interesting career story? Uh, that you have and, and could share with the audience? Um, yeah, um, that's a really good question. And um, it's quite a few. I think one interesting career story that taught me a lot and was kind of a stupid mistake, but also a beneficial mistake to make um, was that there was a client that came up to me. So I'm in consultancy currently and, you know, there's, you know, I've got various clients, different projects and uh, essentially 
how consultancy works for those who don't know is people buy the consultant's time and you help them with whatever it may be now typically there's a salesperson involved in that and the salesperson will sell your time and the client will say we want the consultant to do x y and z and then the sales guy but i guess that will cost this much here's the purchase order and then they'll send you a meeting they'll send you a message sorry and say something along the lines of this client wants x y and z um can you help them out and then you reach out and start the engagement of the project but there's a full breakdown of communication here because what the <laughs> client said to the salesperson just got lost in translation and then what he said to me was completely different so what he what the client had asked for was essentially a network or let's say security architecture review and guidance so it's kind of a bit of an exploratory discovery um i guess engagement of their whole it infrastructure and their controls and their estate and then trying to pick gaps and make recommendations against you know what pick gaps and make recommendations against you know what you think would they need to fix um, and then you put that all in a formal report and you send that over to them. But what that actually said was what, what I'd kind of came back to me from the salesperson was something along the lines of they've got a SOC team and they want to take the SOC team to the next level and you need to help with that. And then I was just like, hold on a minute. No, I've never worked in a SOC. I don't know the first thing about taking a SAC team to the next level. So how do I even do this? The sales guy was like, no, nah, it's cool. You'll have help and guidance and that kind of thing. Um, and I did, luckily. You know, there's a lot of very senior people that I could lean on to help me. But I thought before that, um, I would at least speak to, speak to one or two people, get some advice on SAC, um, and find some resources. So I did a lot of research and this is in my own time. I went off on this whole side quest of how does a SOC work? How do you build a SOC? How do you take a SOC to the next level? I watched all these like webinars from SANS. I found this like 200 page document of like um, 11 strategies for a world-class SOC and literally studied that inside and out. Honestly, I stayed up late stressing about this because I really wanted to deliver on the project and I didn't want to come across like an idiot and this is before I'd even spoken to the client, you know what I mean? So this is all in my head, just overthinking. Um, and I learned a lot from all of that stuff, but it wasn't relevant. Anyway, and then came closer to the actual start date and I had a very senior person, a very senior consultant to lean on. And I said to him, here's all the work I've done. You know, and I found this uh, SOC capability maturity model, which was like this framework that you can use to assess the current maturity of a SOC and take it to the next level. So I've done all this prep work and all this stuff in the background and I'm presenting it to the senior consultant and I'm like, look at all the work I've done. And he's like, hold on a minute. Like, what, what are you talking about? Have you even spoke to him? He's like, I was like, no, not yet. He's like, so how do you know this is what he wants? Of course, because that's what he said. He's like, no, but you haven't spoke to the client. And I was like, yeah, but, you know, I can he said he wanted to take the sock to the next level. Isn't this what he wanted? And he was like, no, you need to speak to the client. You need to have a discovery exploratory type of engagement first to understand like a discovery call. What is the client asking you for? And then you can make a decision on what to do next. So that concept of just speaking to someone with an open mind about the security issues before making that assumption of this is what they need these are the security, this is the security advice, this is their, you know, report, like essentially I'd written a report before I'd even got to the first stage of the project. So yeah, that was a very important lesson for me, but it's just a funny story because it was like, I went off on this whole side quest that I just immersed myself into and it was all for nothing, but that knowledge, I guess, has come in useful in some other places but yeah. nothing but that knowledge i guess has come in useful in some other places but yeah yep. <laughs> yeah nice nice and did was the what the client wanted completely different from what your your report was yeah completely different you know it yeah. was yeah just not even the same but it's 
yeah, that that's uh, I guess my own fault because it's like you've heard a few things and you've just made assumptions and um, I guess sometimes you know written communication. Um, especially when it's going through maybe a technical person, then to a non-technical person, maybe to a few stakeholders and coming over to you and et cetera, et cetera. Things get lost and yeah, it's important to approach cybersecurity, I guess, with an open mind, you know, understand the technology, understand the infrastructure, keep an open mind, don't make any assumptions about what the best thing to do is. It's like if you asked me, you had a company and you said to me, how do I secure my company? And I turned around and said, okay, first you need to do this, 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 this and that. Like that could be completely wrong. I have no idea what your, even if you, what your stack is, what, if you have any servers, are you on-prem, are you remote? Do you use laptops? Does everyone work off their phones or iPads? Like if you have no idea what the technology is, what people need, you can't make silly assumptions like I did. So that taught me to never make assumptions um, in a roundabout way. So, yeah, yeah. No. no, that's a good one, Salah, and, and and thanks so much for that. It's a really, it sounds like a really valuable lesson that 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 you've learned from that experience, and and one that yeah, anyone watching can 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 learn from as well. Uh, so so thanks a lot from that. No way, there is just no way. Some of you guys have been watching this far and have not subscribed to the channel. Others have yet to even like the video. And for the people watching on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, some of you have not even rated the podcast. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you got any value, like, subscribe, and rate the podcast on whatever streaming platform. All right, let's get right back to the video. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little about, bit about um, content creation and, you know, your channel, uh, it's, it's uh, you've been putting out some great content on there and you know it's even growing uh, quickly as well and, and there's been some great stuff on there um, so I wanted to ask you about what inspired you to create content online um, within this sort of cyber security uh, topics and, and stuff you're learning yeah uh, well I'm learning from you because you're doing really well in the content creation <laughs> space honestly I love the content that you put out um, I guess what inspired me is other creators and um yeah it's just kind of giving back you know helping people you know get into cyber security or get information or get some some knowledge from you i mean what i try and do is speak to myself you know one two three years ago um and that's kind of i guess my target audience is you know people are just behind me information i wish i had when i first started things i wish i'd known and um, that's what I try and target is just trying to give back to some of the things that I didn't have. Um, so it's not easy. I mean, creating content, uh, as you know, is very challenging. It's very hard to be consistent. And finding the time to create high quality content is a full job on its own. And, you know, I'm not always proud of like the editing quality and like, I know that could be more visual and more dynamic and I could do a lot more things with it, but sometimes I just kind of only have time to trim the fluff out and just put something up and that just has to do. But I try and keep the, I guess, the value in what I'm saying as accurate as possible. But I guess um, video editing is just something that you could pour, you know, tens of hours into every week. And it's, it's very complex. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess inspiration is just that, you know, eventually, I guess it's building, um, building a community, building an audience, building a network of, that can support each other, that can help each other. I mean, you know, I get messages um, and people who have, you know, got into cybersecurity because of me or past exams because of the knowledge or resources that I've shared, and you know, things that I've, you know, helped to do so I think you know those kind of things keep you motivated like I remember feeling really down I think it was a couple of weeks ago and I was like editing a video and I just had a long day and I wanted to go to the gym and I had to cancel the gym because I just needed to get the video edited and then literally just as I was going through all these weird emotions I just got a message you know 
um, of someone that passed an exam and they were thanking me because I followed the exact resources and those kind of things just it gave me a second win and it keeps you going and keeps you motivated so it's weird adding value I'll be honest because coming from you know where I come from where we come from it's not something you're used to when somebody in Canada or East Africa or West Africa or you know the Philippines or wherever it may be messages you and says you know a really nice message or you've helped them accomplish something and it's yeah it's kind of surreal I know um yeah it's it's one of those things that as long as you've helped or been able to help one or two people that's a goal you know I think there's easier ways to make money from content if we wanted to go down that route or you know creators wanted to go down that route I think cyber security content is a niche within a niche and it's yeah, it's probably not the most profitable niche, to be completely honest. So I think you have to do it for the passion and for the love, um, as opposed to, yeah, getting up to trying to become a, I guess, the next Mr. Beast or the next big YouTuber. You know, that's not going to happen anytime soon with <laughs> cybersecurity. I think there's just a handful of cybersecurity creators who've even made it past, you know, a few million subscribers. So, yeah, it's a very small niche, a very small community, but growing. And I love it. You know, I love to see your channel or the channels. You know, I love when you see new cybersecurity creators and you just think, wow, like it's good to have these different perspectives, different job roles, different types of people, different content. So, yeah, I love it. I think if you've got the heart for it, if you want to do it, go for it. Create content. But yeah it's not easy it's uh it's gonna be a graft yeah yeah thanks so much for that that um insight seller and yeah yeah it's, it's so true um i i really agree with what you said about just how you know the the impact and the value that people receive and and when they message you say oh this is this is amazing thank you so much for this it's really helped me do this 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 like wow i didn't i put this out just not expecting that <laughs> and what's come back from it really keeps me wanting to create more and share what i've learned more um i definitely think you know from when i started till now um i i've just learned a lot more about creating content but also just what I've been creating, even from the first couple of videos I created is, is what I just learned recently. And I'm just really documenting my journey and knowing that there's so many people on that same journey. Um, and, to, and so it's, it's, it's value that is from someone who is just like a few steps ahead of you. Like I have had my career, the length of my career is like two and a half years. So I haven't, I, I don't have 20 years of experiences in, in cloud or cybersecurity, but I'm really just sharing my journey and a lot of people can resonate because I'm just, I've done a couple months or a year ago, what they're trying to do now, which is, um, which is really, really great. Yeah. And, helpful. and that's the thing. I mean, what you touched on there is the main thing. It's so much easier for myself, for any of the other kind of people who watch your content to literally look at your journey and think he's one or two years ahead of me and you're speaking to that person just behind you you know if you had 20 years of experience or 25 or you were one of the 30 or 40 year veterans don't get me wrong you know you'd be a technical genius and whatnot and we'd be i'm sure there'd be some value to content like that but it's out of touch you know those types of people haven't passed an exam recently they haven't tried to apply for a job recently you know, they haven't been in the struggles of, you know, the current cybersecurity market because they're so far ahead. They probably have people reaching out to them for, can you talk at my conference and here's a thousand pounds to do it? You know, you someone just coming out of uni will look at that as, wow, inspiration, etc. But that's so far off, like, it's difficult to relate to that. So I think having your channel and other channels where people are creating content being completely transparent of I've only got X years of experience. It's not much. This is what I know. And seeing that growth over time is just so genuine and so needed in the kind of market because 
there there is a lot of weird and I guess I don't want, I don't like to be negative but there's content that I guess if you follow that and believe that you go off and waste a lot of time and money trying to get into cyber security or tech and it doesn't really add much value people some people are just creating content just to sell you something that isn't very useful and just to make their own bag and they don't care about their audience are selling out and I've seen a lot of that you know kind of the integrity in creating content is difficult mm-hmm. because I'm sure you've had offers from some of these random I guess security boot camps or certain training providers that might ask you to promote something and as soon as you take a look at it you think wow you're charging 15,000 for this 10,000 for that or I've had a few where I've just thought like I could never promote this, even though the money's tempting, but the, yeah, the quality of what they're selling is, yeah, just not, not up to scratch. So yeah, mm. it's, it's good yeah. that you've, you've got that integrity and you're speaking to, you know, your people being honest about what you do and yeah, exactly. hopefully, yeah, hopefully that more creators can be like that amazing and yeah like <laughs> before you buy anything from anyone do your own research uh, including yes. me or Salah um but yeah um definitely like really just uh resonate with with a lot of the stuff you said about you know creating content um and and that leads us to to the final point of this and I just wanted to ask you if there's anything you wanted to share plug or promote uh to the audience no, not really, to be honest. I mean, check me out on YouTube, Cyber Sali, S-A-L-I-H. But other than that, nope. Um, thank you for, yeah, the opportunity. Honestly, it's been a great conversation. Um, yeah, really. And, yeah, I don't really have anything else to plug or promote. But, yeah, I appreciate, you know, you inviting me on. And, uh, yeah, that's been it's been great. Thanks so much, sir. And and just like the last thing I want to say is just, you know, the the tech certified podcast. Uh, I'm I'm so grateful to have guests like you on here. Um, and just just the reason that I sort of started this podcast is because you know the channel is great and there's lots of great content on Kelly certified. You know, from my journey, and you know people have been able to learn from it. Amazing but I just don't know everything. <laughs> I just don't know everything. And, and it's so great that I'm, I'm able to, you know, bring on other people who, yeah, just have a completely different perspective and know a lot more than, than, well, not, yeah, no, uh, different things than, than I do and, yeah. and can bring their perspective to, to the, to the channel and to this, this podcast. So yeah, once again, thanks so much, Sala. So, so, so yeah. Um, yeah, none of us know everything. I guess if someone told you they know everything, they're lying. Um, yeah, nah, it's we're learning every day, trying to just be better, and that's all we're trying to do. Thank you, and thank you so much for watching this episode. And we are releasing every single week, so I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you.